How you doing? My name is Tico Wells, and um, we're here today talking about first generation college bound. And our guest is Deja Cobbs, who is the college access coach yes. for first generation college bound. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I want to just get into it real quick, like, mm -hmm. bam. What what can I? Exp what do you do? Take me through the process if I'm a parent. Um, so I typically tell my parents. First off, that I know that we're located here in Laurel, but we are um, we uh, service any student in Prince George's County. So um, I first ask them, of course, what their a student's grade because we start uh, enrolling students in their eleventh grade year. Okay. So they have to be a rising senior. Okay. And um, I basically ask them some general questions about their student. Um, we focus in on when I meet with the student, having the orientation. Um, I explain to them the different services we provide. So a lot of times um, they want to know what days I'm there. So I say, you know, I'm there two days a week at, if they're at the site school. Okay. But if not, I'm always available by phone. Okay. And so So you go to the schools too? Yes. You're in the school. I'm in the schools. I'm in our site schools. So our site schools that we have is uh, Laurel High School, uh -huh. uh, Parkdale High Yay. School, yes, of course. Um, and we have uh, Central High School, Perma Heights High School, and Potomac High School. Got so it. those are site schools okay. that our coaches are in. Okay. But we do have other students that if you live near that school, mm -hmm. we will make you a part of that site school. Okay. So the student will attend workshops at that school because we have evening workshops that we offer. What are the workshops on? So we have workshops on college admissions and okay. they go along with the college bound process. Okay. So of course in the fall, students are applying. We okay. have admissions counselors come to the, those high schools in the okay. evenings, speak with them, financial aid. We have a FAFSA help night What's where FAFSA? we help. So that is the application and that's huge point is the application for federal government money so okay. Department of Education okay and so every student we encourage to complete the FAFSA mm -hmm. um, and we assist them in that process making okay. sure it's correct uh, helping them understand the basics of it and then understanding how financial aid takes place and that's a huge bulk of pretty much our focus is that college affordability got it piece got it and a lot of students don't realize that they can afford college and so is there a grade point average that the student has to have so for our program we uh, we have to have students that have a 2.0 GPA minimum okay a cumulative we have to have um, at the desire to go to college so a lot of times we have parents that will say hey you know I really want my student to go to college but when I speak with the student there's not much desire there oh. and I have to explain maybe there's other plans but we don't want to force a student Okay. But we want to help them if they have that desire and that determination to do what needs to be done. Okay. Okay. Cause so college, you're, you're not saying college should be for everybody, but if you desire it yes. and you have at least a 2.0 grade point average. Mm -hmm. We offer SAT fee waivers so the student can take the SAT or ACT fee waiver. So we, we pay for that application fee waivers. Um, and I monitor up to six colleges or universities for them to apply based off of their GPA, their SAT scores, and their financial profile because okay. we focus on affordability per situation, per family. So what, like you say affordability, do, do the parents have to have a certain income or a, a minimum income or a maximum in, income to get money? So yes, there are certain things that we look for. I know that um, we work with low to moderate income or first generation. We define first generation students as a parent, one parent or the other does not have a bachelor's degree. Okay. So it's a case to case basis. Okay. Depending on what they're eligible for, that tells me off of GP, SAT, and household income. Okay. So once I look at that, we'll go through the process of what they're eligible for. If it's state grants, which we help with that process with Maryland Higher Education Commission, okay. we advocate for the students with admissions, financial aid. Um, so I'm that person, I always say it's a hand-in-hand -hand process. Okay. Hand-in-hand -hand process. Hand-in-hand -hand process. What, so if, say if, if I'm a, a, a single parent mm -hmm. and I make 50000 a year. Mm-hmm and my kid has a 2.0. 
I'm going to also ask to see, a, of course, putting together a college access plan for you. I would say how many people live in the household. That makes a difference. Say if it's two, so me and the kid. That I would say then at that point we have to focus on affordability because I already know based off the income, the GPA, has the student taken SATs or ACTs? If not, we may have to start the community college. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. It's about the plan. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. Now, you I mean, finish. is there like, you know, if, if you make this much, it's too much? Say, say a, a household of two. Is, 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 there, is there sort of a scale that the government puts out? Or how do you figure out what's, what's affordable or, or what they're eligible for? Yeah, so basically, for example, if I have a family household size of, say, eight, uh -huh. eight people live in the household, the income is 50000 Right. Based off of when they complete the FAFSA, there's mm -hmm. something called the EFC, the Estimated Family Contribution Number. Okay. That number is what I tell a student to look at to see how much you are responsible to contribute to your education. Okay. Based off that number, that tells me what you're eligible for on the state side okay. with Maryland Higher Education Commission. Okay. And then also looking at affordability. What colleges should we focus in on? So that GPA, what you, I know off of your academics you can get in, mm -hmm. but also you can afford. Got it, got it. So if a school costs $50,000 a year. Mm, that's expensive. And yeah, okay. That's expensive. So I would say also a student to advocate. I had a student do that before. She really wanted to go to a school. She called the school financial aid office and they ended up looking at her GP and her SATs and she got full tuition paid. Wow. So it does happen where the students, we want to teach them that independence. Right. So they can't advocate. If you really want to go to a school that we yeah. know is very costly, yeah. it doesn't hurt to try to call right. and find out what can I be eligible for based off of academics. And that's the thing. I always say if you have high academics and consider low income, mm -hmm. that can equal money, money. Okay, great. You're doing a great job. Thank and you. it's been a Thank pleasure you. meeting you and working with you. Oh, yes. I've been involved, you know, since the beginning. I was going to say, you've seen and everything. So. <laughs> well, I haven't seen everything because every time I come back, there's something new. new. Mm -hmm. And that, that makes me feel good, yeah. you know. So continue with the good work. Definitely and uh, Definitely we hope will. to see you soon. How can they get in touch? So they can go online to www.fgcb.org and they can go under college access. That tells everything as uh, far as finding out about getting your student enrolled along with submitting an interest card to us so that we can receive that and I will take a look at it and we'll get that process going. Thank you very much, Deja. No and, problem. Uh, keep up the good work. This yeah. is awesome and uh, thumbs up. Uh, once again, this is Tico Wells. We're talking about First Generation College Bound. FirstGenerationCollegeBound.org or FGCB.org. Peace.